All right, all right, all right. We are live. Yo, yo, yo. Tell me what you know. Welcome to the Sunshine Show. Woo! You guys, girls, ladies, gentlemen, I have such a special treat for you tonight, this afternoon, this morning, wherever in the world you may roam, because that's right. The Sunshine Show is worldwide. I have the one and only, the most amazing, the most fabulous, the most phenomenal, the most Bowie of them all. I have Taylor Intram in the house. What's up, Taylor? What's up? How's everyone? We are doing good. Stoked to have you on the show. I know I butchered your last name. Tell me one more time. Uh, Antrim. Antrim. All right, perfect. Taylor Antrim. Perfect. What have you been up to today, Taylor? Uh, I've been in class all day. <laughs> all right, very cool. What uh, Are you attending a university? Yeah, I'm at Grand Canyon University studying marketing right now, but I'm also in band. Super fun. You're studying marketing. Do you also take uh, like uh, theory and all that stuff? Well, I will my junior year because I'm minoring in that, but I've taken like classes in high school too, so. Okay, very, 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 very nice. I'm so happy to have you on the show tonight. I have uh, been catching up on sleep today, so I am well rested for this interview. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So I am in California. Whereabouts in the world are you, Taylor? I'm from California, but I'm in Arizona right now for school. <gasps> Arizona. Oh my gosh. Here on the Sunshine Show, we have a very special place in our hearts for anybody, everybody, and all things Arizona. Very, very cool. What was the uh, change like for you from uh, moving from California to Arizona? Uh, it's hot. <laughs> uh, it's pretty hot in the summer, but in the winter, it's nice weather still. Um, the biggest change for me was like learning how to live on my own, which honestly I adapted really quickly because I made a lot of friends and, you know, just playing guitar to help me through everything. Very nice. All right. Well, that's what we are here for to talk about Taylor and the guitar. Taylor, when did you pick up the guitar first? I picked up guitar when I was 13 after going to a Metallica concert and I got pit passes and I was like five foot three at the time. So I was able to convince people to let me go in front of them until I got to the rail. And Kirk Hammett was right in front of me the entire time. And he played like the one solo in front of me, the master of puppets. And I was just like, I want to be like this guy. He had like so much passion. And so like a week later, I started playing guitar. Wow. Very cool. Were you able to pick it up pretty easily? I mean, I have a great teacher um, who's helped me with, pretty much everything in my playing. Also, my high school band director has helped a lot too because he plays guitar and just both of them are great influences on me who have helped me get to where I am today. Very, very, very nice. About how um, many hours would you say you practice? What's up, Boom? Uh, Sorry, that's my friend. Oh, what's up? Thank you all for hanging out here on the Sunshine Show. About how much of your day goes into playing the guitar? Well, at least like four to five hours, usually, um, unless I have something major going on. I just, it, it's, it's what I love doing, and uh, it gives me like new ideas every day and new goals to work towards and new visions to just get better every day and become the best version of myself. Very nice. Absolutely. Did you uh, use YouTube a lot to teach you, um, or... Do you prefer having an instructor? I have my instructor. Uh, his name's Akira. He's really, really good player. And I love learning from him because he just knows so much. And he just, he knows like the perfect exercise to give you or like the perfect song to give you if you're struggling with something. And it's really helped me through my playing. Now, watching you play your guitar, uh, my mind is blown with every video that I see of yours. You look like a complete natural. How, uh, is it pretty easy? I mean, is it just like, were you born to play the guitar? Because it seems like you were. I mean, there probably, but I mean, again, there's always stuff I can get better at. 
And that's the biggest challenge with guitar is like, you're always going to seem like you're struggling with something because you're always trying to level up and you're always trying to do things that are better, that are going to make you a better player. And so, yeah, some of it comes easy, but some of it's like really hard and you have to work on it. And that's just natural. Sure. You make it seem so very easy. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> very cool. So you started when you were 13. Have you worked with any bands or do you prefer being a solo player? I would like to be in a band. Um, I, I'm not yet. I mean, I have some like original songs that I've written like guitar and bass parts out for, but I would love to be in like an original band. I just haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. Very cool. What kind of band would that be? Uh, metal, like 80s thrash metal, Metallica type like i also like just any 80s metal pretty much because that's what i've listened to ever since i was a kid ah so did your parents bring you up on 80s hair metal or what well no my mom got me into metallica when i was seven um she we were driving in the car one time and she played in her sandman and i was like what was that and she was like that's that's metallica and uh i was like I was like, can you play it again? And she's like, yeah, sure. And I never listened to that pop bullshit ever again. <laughs> Let's see, we got Natasha in the house. Hey, what's up, Natasha? Very cool. She says, guys, I know her. She's literally my best. And look, you have all the peeps showing up in the building you too, tonight. <laughs> Isaiah. Thank you guys all for hanging out. We got Daniel Bayanez in the house. What's up, Daniel? We got Randy in the house. What's up, Randy? We got Mama Can too, all the way from South Texas Hello. in the house. Do you guys have any comments, questions, suggestions for your host, Sunny C, or the one and only Taylor? Make sure to drop them there in the comment section, and I will get to them as soon as possible. All right, Taylor, do you see yourself singing at some point in the future? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I'm a metal and I don't think my voice really fits the metal, the metal scene. So I'd rather have somebody else do it and have a better band as a result. Oh, okay. Very cool. Have you already kind of been eyeing people that you would like to form a band with? Or do you think that is like going to organically come together in the future? Uh, I mean, I've been contacting a couple people and I'm just going to see how everything goes. Uh, who's the right people, the right fit um, for what I'm looking for. And hopefully that'll come in time. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. First question of the evening. Taylor, what's your go-to axe? This is my uh, Fender Strat American Series um, Aquamarine Metallic. Um, I got it when I was a freshman in high school, uh, almost in the summer. And I spent a year, like, saving up for it. And shout out to my mom because she uh, bought half – as like my only birthday and Christmas present in for like that entire year. And I bought the other half. Wow. So very cool. My mom bought me my first base um, back, back, back in the day. Uh, Taylor, why don't you give us a little taste of what you got? All right. wow oh my goodness such a natural it looks like you really go into a different place when you're playing where do you go uh don't fuck up <laughs> 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 do you really think that in your mind i mean yeah I, I get really scared to mess up um it's just like i guess i care about like what people think and i want to do the best that i possibly can yeah absolutely we got mike torin in the house all the way from canada what's up mike thanks for hanging out with us mike will be on the show tomorrow you guys so make sure and tune back gotta in. check that out Heck yeah. All right, let's see. Mama Can Too wants to know if you have a favorite venue that either you like to go watch shows at or maybe a favorite venue you'd like to play at in the future. 
Who? Maybe in the future, like just any stadium. I mean, it's my dream to like play stadium tours and have them sell out with a big band that I wrote like originals for. Yeah. So what is uh, your originals looking like already? Do you sort of already have a collection of originals you've started? Oh, I have a bunch of ideas and I have about like five or six like completed guitar part songs with mm-hmm. like guitar and bass. And then I have like 40 to 50 like solid riff ideas that I'm looking into developing when I get together with a band. Wow, very cool. Do you have uh, other favorite guitar players besides Kurt Hammond of uh, Metallica? Oh, yeah, he's my favorite, but uh, I like Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, Yngwie Malmsteen. Like, uh, I love Iron Maiden, so Dave Murray and Adrian Smith, both great guitar players. I love their dual leads. It's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say, oh, well, Jimi Hendrix, obviously, just because, like, so influential. So, yeah. Very cool. Do you go to most sh- Do you go to many shows? Not many. I mean, I've been to Metallica twice and Iron Maiden once, but that those were all awesome. Yeah, I bet, man. So, how do you juggle college and being a guitar virtuoso? Uh, guitar first, school second. <laughs> very cool. But uh, no, seriously, I have good grades, so don't kill me, mom. <laughs> oh my gosh i bet your family misses you seeing as you moved from california to arizona do you stay in close connections all day every day with mama oh absolutely very very cool my mama is my best friend and if i can i talk to her at least three hours a day i know that sounds excessive people but hey when you got a good mama you got to show her all the love Absolutely. <laughs> that's even that's that's really in contact with my friends and like other support cast and teachers that I've that have been memorable to me and have helped me. So it's nice being able to still talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. We got Scott Weiss in the building of Underground Roots Clothing. Uh, what's up, Scott? Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Let's see. Next question from Daniel Bayanez. What are your thoughts on the guitarist Dimebag Daryl from the band Pantera? He was a great guitar player. I like how he used his shapes a lot and, his, and he just like moved the pentatonic scale. He's obviously got some great ideas that have turned into amazing solos yeah. and his riffs are insane too. Very, very cool. So you talked about shapes. How uh, much do shapes make up uh, the majority of your guitar playing? Well, I mean, I would say there's, like, two approaches to learning. I'd say there's, like, notes, so you learn, like, all the notes. And I know both, but, like, I'd say, like, I more see it in my head where I see, like, shapes on guitar. So, like, for instance, a major scale has, like, is, like, right? But there's there's modes to that, and there's a mode per each note. And I see that in my head more than, like, just reading it, you know? Okay. Very, very, very nice. Um, I know as a bass player, I use shapes a lot to, um, you know, come up with my bass lines. And it's just also nice to have like that visual. I've also interviewed people who, when they play, they see colors. Um, have you ever met anybody like that or heard of this? I've heard of people, but not like personally met that have seen colors. Yes. There's a bassist, Cece Powell out of the UK. And I can't remember, Dawn, what is it called? She ha- it's, uh, it's something, um, but when she hears music, she actually sees colors. And I think that that is so very interesting that the human brain can process music like that. It's crazy that uh, there's so many different approaches that can get you to the same result. And other people wouldn't dare to think like that that, that would work for them. Yeah. It's nice seeing how other people come take different paths and end up in the same place. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Don, what are you trying to say? That Cece's taking mushrooms before she plays the bass? Is that what you are implying? All right, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I see Don down there in the basement laughing. All right, very cool, very cool. Um, all right, what's up, Paul Tar from Colorado in the house? How you doing, Paul? Thank you so very much for hanging out with us. All right, cool, man. So uh, let's see, if you did put the perfect band together, 
and you went on tour. Where would you envision you and your band going on tour with? And like, who is a bucket list artist or band that you would be performing alongside with? Uh, well, Dead or Alive. Ooh, that's a good, and Dead or Alive, Dead or Alive, either. Uh, this is your show, Taylor. So I'd say like, just like playing around the world in like big venues. Uh, obviously Metallica is my biggest influence. So I think it'd be cool to be on tour with them or like uh, specifically Kirk Hammett, just so I can learn from him or even like Eddie Van Halen. Like he, some of the stuff he did is so innovative and like nobody could understand that. But I feel like playing with him would be in like a great aspect to learn some of that stuff that you wouldn't be able to pick up any other way. And Kirk Hammett, same thing. Like, I just love what he plays. Like, even if he's not the most technical player, he knows exactly what to play where. And I love that. And how do you find yourself comparing yourself to like these guitarists that you look up to as far as like style oh. and technique? No. Oh, uh, I, I try to, yeah, sure. Like maybe I'll have some of their style implements, but I know I'm never going to be them. Um, right. They're, they've already created their path and their legacy, and I want to create my own. Yeah. Perfect. Man, Taylor, look at you. You look young. I don't know how old you are. I'm but 18. You're 18? Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. All right. Uh, very well spoken and such an amazing guitarist for being so very young. So you must have just graduated high school then. Yeah. Very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Very awesome. So what made you pick marketing uh, to study? Uh, marketing, I wanted, so I ideally want to do something in music. Um, I figured not only can I learn stuff from marketing that can help me further my music career by learning the business side of it, but I can also, if like for some reason it doesn't work out, I have something to fall back on that I can do pretty much anything with. Very nice. Yeah, I think it is very, very important to remember, although we all would love to be professional musicians, um, sometimes it's good to have something to fall back on. Absolutely. I actually studied uh, political science and sociology when I was in college. Um, but I will say I am not using that now, Taylor. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm sharing that with the world. But just so <laughs> everybody knows that. All right, so what's up with uh, 100 packets of ranch? What What does this question say? <laughs> Dawn is saying, I don't remember what the condition is called. I just saw her pick out gauge of string blindfolded. So she's a freak. I, I, I think that he's talking about uh, CC playing blindfolded. Now, oh, yes. So I, I can play my head, but. Oh, can you? Yeah, but uh, I have like no room right now. I could try, but. <sighs> I have like no room. I almost hit my Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, girl, you are amazing. So, uh, what I was saying was a hundred packets of ranch. A hundred packets of ranch? Yeah. That's what I got for you. Do you know what that means or do you not know what that means? I do not know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I say, I don't know, man. I'm too, <laughs> I'm too young for that one. Oh, 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 no, I know what he means. I know what he means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. I thought Isaiah was trying to make me look like a dang fool over here, yeah, Taylor. Tell Isaiah, tell Isaiah I thought it was 300. <laughs> Isaiah, you're there. You know what's up. All right, let's see. Daniel Bayonet says, very Jimi Hendrix style. So how did you know you could play behind your head, and how did you perfect this technique? Uh, well, I wouldn't say perfected, but I wanted to start doing it when, like, uh, Master of Puppets was on Stranger Th or Stranger Things featured Master of Puppets. And I was like, okay, well, I don't watch Stranger Things, but I know Master of Puppets is getting popular again. And I already know how to play the solo. So 
I wanted to try something different, so I put the solo behind my head, and let's let's not talk about how long that took at first, but I got it on video, and I posted it, and that's actually, like, my first video that got over a 1,000 likes. That is really cool. So then I just started doing it, because I was like, this is pretty cool, and I can show off a little. <laughs> Yeah, very cool. How uh, how does it feel to kind of like blow up on uh, social media? On your Instagram, you have over 20,000 followers. You have a lot of people just loving the content that you're putting out there. Uh, how does it feel to see to know so many people are looking up to you and you're motivating the world with your guitar playing? It's amazing because I, d I like if you told me this a year ago that I'd be at this point right now, I'd be like, yeah, right. And I mean, I still obviously have a long way in my journey to be where I want to be, but it's a step that is crucial. And it's awesome seeing that I can inspire people because that's what one of my main goals in life is. Oh, and it very nice. means a lot that people care. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Isaiah here says, I swear it was a hundred Taylor. It was three. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with you two, but I did have Isaiah in my inbox last night talking about 100 packets of ranch. And I'm like, bro, if she gets mad at me because I dropped this bombshell, I'm going to be upset at you. But I'm it's glad nothing it all bad. Went out. <laughs> all right, very cool. What else? Uh, do you do much else besides school and music? Or it looks like guitar is kind of your full time job away from school. Yeah. I mean, guitar's my job. I'm also in pep band at school. I play saxophone. Uh, so I go to a bunch of games and play in a band. It's <gasps> awesome. It's super fun. You, you play saxophone as well? Yes. Wow, very cool. So did the saxophone come first or did the guitar come first? The uh, saxophone came first, actually. Okay, very cool. Which one do you like more or you don't have to pick a favorite? I like guitar better just because it's like more of the music that I like, but saxophone's still fun to play and I enjoy doing it in band. Yeah. Do you play much jazz music? Not much, but I mean, like, I, I was in jazz band in high school. So, I mean, I got like, I played guitar though. So, I played a bunch of chords. <laughs> so, wow. uh, very, very, very cool. All right. What's Don's number one though? Yeah. Don's saying packets of ranch, mustard, it's all condiments. Okay, so this is the long-running joke. Donovan, my beautiful secretary who lives down in the basement and does all my social media work, uh, we feed him in, in, condiment, <laughs> in condiments of um, mustard, um, sometimes sriracha, and I guess now he wants ranch. Don, you only get ranch if you're a really good secretary, okay? So keep up the good work, and the ranch will come um <laughs> how much uh, how much time would you say goes into your content creation uh a week like i try oh no <laughs> <laughs> um a week i'd say i try to get like two videos out maybe one if i'm working on something harder but uh i like to just focus on playing and getting my priorities done and then like having covers to go along with that or like if I come up with a cool line I'm like hey I can post this line like it's cool so it's anywhere from like five to eight hours a week I mean just like trying to record a perfect take is because I'm super like it has to be perfect for it to go online sure yeah it's difficult sometimes to like figure out when is it perfect and when can we just like post it and just be okay with it. And do you find a lot of times when you re-record stuff and record it over and over, do you find a lot of times you're going with like the t earlier takes or is it normally the later takes? Oh, uh, it's normally the later takes. It is, okay. Um, nice. Sometimes like one time I took the earlier take and I was like, why did I just spend more time re-recording that when that one was good? And well, I guess I thought I messed up when I didn't, but. Most of the time, it's the later takes, and most of the time, I know, okay, that was the one. Yeah, and uh, let's talk a little bit about your original music, these solos, these riffs that you're coming up with. How are you, I mean, what is the inspiration? What's your muse behind these lines that you're writing? Honestly, uh, it's just like kind of fidgeting around and like finding something that sounds cool. 
and I'll develop it if I have to change it. Um, I'll change it, but uh, it takes a lot of work because it's like, I'm like, okay, this would sound cool, and I have it in my head sometimes, but then sometimes I don't, and sometimes I'm just messing around with the series of notes, and I'm like, hey, that sounds cool. Let me, like, work that into a rhythm, or let me put a drum loop behind it and see what I can do. Yeah, all right. So you do drum loops uh, to help you along with your writing. Sometimes I'll just YouTube, like, metal drum track and see if anything that's cool comes up. Nice. Have you done much collaborate, like online collaborations? I know that's like the thing now. I've done um a couple like solos, like cover solos for people. And then when Metallica dropped Deluxe Eterna, I got like nine or 10 people together and we all recorded it. And I put it on one video. That was pretty fun. Ah, oh, very nice. So we got Craig McKnight, the Muffin Man in the house. What's up, Craig? Thank you so much for hanging out. If you guys are not already in the Muffin Book Good Vibes loop, make sure to go check them out today. They're doing a lot of really good stuff down in San Diego. San Diego. All right. So you like California. You like Arizona. Where are some places that you would like to go visit or go take your guitar and play a show? Even probably outside like, of the United States. Probably Europe because I uh, I was supposed to go to Europe in 2020 and obviously it got canceled because of COVID. Uh, oh, I was supposed to be with like an honor band. Um, so I think it'd be super cool to go there, especially with a band and like you, you get to play in different countries, different nights. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. What would be like your perfect band? Like how many members? Obviously you're playing some like heavy metal fucking hair jam music but what does the lineup look like say like four to five um depending on if the rhythm guitar thanks dylan uh dylan's say... actually from arizona too oh no way yes i just interviewed mr dilly dank he plays bass in desert fish um dylan whereabouts in arizona are you All right, I totally interrupted you, and I'm so sorry. What were we no, talking you're all about? good. Oh, okay. Uh, perfect band mm -hmm. setup. I think that's what we were yeah. talking about. Let's say four to five, depending on if the rhythm player sings or not. And if not, that's fine. I'd like to have a vocalist who doesn't just scream and growl all the time that just actually can sing. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I feel like that's a lot of what's missing from, like, newer metal bands. It's like, they're great musically. But a lot of people don't want to hear that like 24 seven and it's not knocking them. It's just like th th there's a good combination of both. Like I like Slipknot because they do both or like 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 but but if you're just like tunnel screaming the entire song, like some a lot of people that doesn't appe appeal to. Um, and then so I'd say like just a vocalist and then a rhythm guitar player, drummer, bass player and then myself as a lead player. Hey, very nice. Let's see. Dilly is in two songs. Oh, man, I'm in Phoenix. <laughs> How far away is Tucson and Phoenix? Two hours. Ah, that's not too bad at all. All right, we got Willie Dunsmore, another Arizonian in the house. Woo, woo! What's up, Willie? How you doing? I love Willie. I actually was able to interview uh, Willie a while back. If you guys missed that interview, oh, in he is in Phoenix. Um, nice. Really, really cool dude, too. I interviewed him a couple of months back. It might have even been a year. Uh, it's available for streaming on the Sunshine Show. I see Daily says it's only an hour and a half if you drive fast. You just got to drive like Arizona people. <laughs> Go on like 80 and a 40. <laughs> so you said it's hot. Do you spend a lot of time indoors or what's it like over there? I like a... When it in well now it's fine, but in the summer it's hot. So yeah, in the summer I'm indoors a lot, but I also like playing sports with my friends indoors when it's hot, and then when it's cold we'll like go outside and play like on the outdoor basketball courts. Um, but but guitar is like all inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. very cool, man. Uh, let's see, we got oh, man, we got a lot of Phoenix in the house. Phoenix. What's up, Matt Durant? Man, I got a hair, and it's on my face, and it's itching me. So that's what's going on here, people. All right. Uh, what's up, Matt Durant Durant in the house? Love you. Thank you so much for hanging out. 
All right, man. So what about studio? Have you done much studio work at all? Not much, no. Um, I'm waiting for the right time that I have everything ready to go in and, like, record a full-length album before I, like, enter any sort of studio because I want to be prepared and I want to come out with the best possible stuff. Very nice. Let's see. Dawn says, I have fleas. That's not very nice, Dawn, and I feel like maybe you won't get any mustard tonight. It's all ranch. Right. What? It's <laughs> <laughs> no ranch, no mustard, none of that for you, Don. All right, we got quite a few people here to hang out. Taylor, why don't you play us one more amazing solo? All right, here's one of mine. <laughs> preview but that's like my favorite solo i've written so amazing let's check out these comments taylor shredding the nar nar daniel bayonez with a <laughs> mind blown emoji got kelsey k in the house uh let's see mama cantu says oh damn girl <laughs> thank you Let's see, what does Dilly say? John Havenhill runs his own studio down in Tucson. Great prices and lots of skill. John's good. If I ever, I might check it out sometime. Oh, yeah. So what happens if somebody wants to hire Miss Taylor for some session work? Are you available for session work? I mean, I could do like a guest solo or something if like you guys, if anybody would need that, like I'd be willing to do that especially for like metal rock uh i haven't done much but i'd be willing to work with with it yeah so how would somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to do some session work with you just uh, shoot me a message on instagram uh at taylor.antrum very 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 cool now do you have a link tree now or do you mostly do most of your stuff yeah i got a link tree um i do have that too i'm still trying to figure out how to use it but <laughs> I think we're all trying to figure out how to use everything. There's such like everything coming at you all day, every day, different apps, different this, yeah. different, different platforms. Um, how do you deal with that? I mean, I know you do come from the younger generation, so I guess you kind of grew up already like having YouTube and stuff. But now we have like TikTok and we have Snapchat and we have Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. How do you keep up with all of it? Do you keep up with all of it? I uh, I have Instagram, TikTok, and like I have a Twitter just to check a couple things. I don't have Snapchat. Uh, I have Facebook because that's where my band communicates on, or like my my college band. So, but I don't use it. Um, so it's pretty much just like Instagram and TikTok for me right now. At least uh, every time I try to post on YouTube, I get copyright strikes. So I need to figure that out. Ah, got you. All right, very cool. You guys, you're hanging out with your host, Sunny C of the Sunshine Show and Taylor Antrim. Ding, did I say that right again? Antrim, Antrim. Taylor Antrim, right? Yeah, Antrim. Yeah, Antrim. All right, cool. Next question comes from Kelsey K. Who are some of your favorite guitar players on Instagram? Oh. Uh... Who's the guy that, uh, he has like a Eddie Van Halen guitar and he's really good. I don't know his username, but he's really good. And then there's a, there's a guy who plays like funk fusion. Who's really good. Uh, uh, I got, I've seen him like just so many talented people. It's hard to narrow it down. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Dylan says Yvette Young. Yeah, she's great. All right, very cool. All right, next question. What is your dream guitar, Taylor? 
I want to custom. Um, I have some things in mind that I want. Um, this was my dream guitar. Like, it's already made, so I'm very happy I got it. I swapped an invader into the bridge uh, position, so it's mo mo monster right now. But uh, my dream guitar would be, like, my own shape with, like, my color choice and, like, EMGs, Floyd Rose. Do you have a particular company that you would like to work with? I like ESP a lot. Um, or, like, there's a couple. There's a company that I have a guitar from that I got at NAMM called Viper that makes amazing guitars. Nice. NAMM. Let's talk about NAMM. Will you be going this year? Uh, No, I have finals. <laughs> Ah, Taylor's got finals. She cannot go to Nam this year. Okay, well, that's maybe fine. next year. I love Nam. I'm hoping to go, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to go either. Um, what are your some of your favorite things about going to Nam? I liked. Okay, so I've only been once. I went this year. I liked seeing some of the equipment that was coming out. Uh, some of the recording stuff, new innovations, guitar brands I've never even heard of that were insanely good to play. Uh, seeing, I, I love the ESP booth. Me and my mom went into that booth about 50 times just to look at all the customs. <laughs> uh, my mom's a huge fan of like Taylor acoustics, uh, when I play them. So we went in there and she's like, play this one, play this one, play this one. And it was really fun. <laughs> Is your mom also a musician? No, she just enjoys watching me play. And I, and I really like that. And she's always there to support me through whatever wow. I need, so it's great. That is awesome. My mom, uh, all through all through middle school, high school, college, anytime I had a show and, you know, everybody's clapping at the end, oh, no, mom's like, sunshine! You know, like, you can hear yeah. throughout everybody, and I'm just like, that's my mama! Yep. Uh, tell me the importance of having a good support system. Uh, the importance, uh, starting with, like, mom, uh, I got my band director in high school, who was always there when I needed to talk about something with music or, like, personal, uh, my guitar teacher, all my friends, uh, it's, it's great to have all those people that you can, like, bounce off of, and you, you trust them to tell you if you're doing something right or wrong, um, like, for instance, if I go to some, somebody with a riff and they're like this sucks dude I'm, i'd rather have that than have somebody be like it's good it's good it's good and i and those people i put trust into are people who are going to tell me if it's good or people who are going to be honest with me and be like hey maybe fix this it's very important to have that and to st stay honest and better yourself yeah uh and to be able to accept uh con constructive criticism I believe. oh absolutely that's very important Sometimes it's hard, right? Because it's really easy to get one's feelings hurt and to take things personally. But like you said, a part of having a good support system is being able to listen to the things that people are trying to tell you to make you a better player. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's see. Next question. Dilly Dank, how long have you been playing and what advice do you have to increase finger speed on the fretboard? So I've been playing for five years and my number one advice as much as it sucks is to turn on a metronome and just play something you're struggling with at a slow speed. And then when you get that like three times in a row, speed it up 10 beats. When you get that speed it up 10 beats, if you don't get it, drop it down five beats and work your way up. Um, also exercises like alternate picking exercises or sweeping exercises. Like even if it's just something like... <laughs> Eventually, you get to, but when I first started playing that, it was like, like the the Met is gonna keep you in time. And as you can see, I was a bit inconsistent on that one on purpose to kind of show you. Um, so the Met's gonna keep you in time and keep you true, like right on the beat. And the and the speeding it up is gonna make sure that you have it in both of your hands and your hands are synced up, and that'll ultimately increase your speed. Very very nice. Thank you so much. See, we got Gabriel Walker in the house. What's up, Gabe? Thanks so much for hanging out with me and Taylor this beautiful, beautiful day. All right, let's see Paul Tar. 
Music moms are the best. My mom used to take pics when I was in bands. She even would dread the mosh pit to get, she would even get in the mosh pit, pit to get good shots. Oh, I love that. Well, moms are the best. Oh, yeah. They really, really are. All right, Taylor, 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 Taylor. One question I ask all of my guests. If you could throw a dinner party for any five musicians, dead or alive, who would those five musicians be? And what would you serve at your dinner party? Well, this is going to, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> oh my, so am I. And my, my pig that lives in the closet appreciates that, Taylor. <laughs> it's, I've just never really like. I think it's a texture thing. I've just never really liked it. Um, but I'd say Kirk Hammett, Eddie Van Halen, Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden. Uh, maybe like Brandy Rhodes, uh, and like Michael Jackson. Maybe I feel like that'd be cool. Just nice. to have like that alternative like pop artist in there. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe I'd serve like. I make really good pasta, so maybe, or maybe mac and cheese. I make good mac and cheese. Nice. Macaroni and cheese it is, baby. And we're having a full-on metal party with MJ hanging out. What's that? And you're invited to, so there you go. Oh, thank you. That's so very kind. I love this. I love going to the dinner parties, everybody. All right, you guys, hanging out with me and Taylor. We're going to go for about another 10 minutes so if you guys have any last minute questions comments suggestions drop them there in the comment section all right taylor what would you say is the fastest or hardest piece of music that you've ever learned uh dire's eve by metallica the solo in particular it's crazy because if you mess up one note you're you're done like <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like that takes a lot of dedication. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it took me like five days to learn it. I learned it over quarantine uh, when it like first started. Uh, I was just like, you know what? This is my favorite solo. I'm going to learn it. And I'd only been playing like two, two and a half years at the time. So it took me a while to learn it. I miss you too, Natasha. Oh, look at you and your friends showing up. That's really cool. So, yeah, I'd say that it, it, it's hard to play. Also, Eruption's pretty hard to nail, um, especially live. I've done that one live before, and it's like you get up there, and you're like, oh, crap, I'm about to play Eruption, and everybody notices it, and everybody knows it. So they're going to notice if I mess it up. Where do you play live at? Well, I played with my teacher a couple times, and then I played at a talent show at my high school. Ah, and did you win said talent show? I bet you did. Oh, uh, it was it wasn't like a judge thing. It was just like it was a solos night for our band. So like we had to try out to do a solo and I tried out and made it. Very, very nice. Uh I would imagine you got a full fledged scholarship to any damn music school you wanted. I didn't try. I I, I really didn't want to go to music school. Taylor oh, like college experience, you know? Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Um, let's talk about endorsements. Do you have any endorsements yet? Yes, I do. I have drop strap. Um, so this thing goes, it's kind of hard to open, but sorry, there's tape on it. No, 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 you're fine. Take your time. We are good. I've actually heard about these drop straps. They're, they're awesome. So it's this thing. And it, like, goes on the guitar, like, goes on the peg. Okay. And what it does is you press this and you pull. Because um, this part hooks onto your strap. So you pull okay. it. So if you want your strap to go higher, you push it and push the button and pull this up. And then if you want it to go lower, you just release it. And as soon as you release it, it just kind of locks in place. Ah, so you can, like, adjust your strap while you're, like, on stage? Like, on the fly. Super convenient. That is super cool. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, what about uh, string endorsements? I don't have anything yet. All right, what are you looking for? Uh, ideally, Erdy Bowl. I use Paradigms. 
But okay. if and if anyone wants to give me a string endorsement, I will happily use your strings. <laughs> All right, Taylor, what kind of rig are you playing through? Oh, just right now in college, like, I got this, don't laugh, I took the grill off, but I got this Spark Mini, and basically, because I'm in college, I can't have, like, a loud tube amp. It's perfect, because it's got all these tones. Hold up. I'll show you. It's super cool. Um, on my phone. And so oh, wow. this is, like, the sound that I made, but, like, if I wanted to play, let's say, like, Led Zeppelin, right? I could, like, uh-huh. search, like, a Led Zeppelin tone, and let's say I want to use this one. Or let's say I don't like that one. Let's do... Where's the one I was using yesterday? Let's use this one. Or, like... So, like, yeah, I like that one. Or let's say, like, any band... You can just like search them up, and people have already made like preset tones for them. Wow! Or, so like this is like my main sound. So like that's like my lead. My lead. Like you can do a bunch <laughs> with it, and it's awesome because you can like change the amp. Um, Oh, wow. That's amazing. There's, like, all these pedal options. They have, like, different drives, different reverbs. So is it almost like how the Line 6 what kind of was when it first came out? Like an amp simulator sort of type deal? Yeah, it's kind of like that. But it's, like, in an amp. And, it, and the tone quality is amazing. And I love it. And it's so it's tiny. So cool. It's, like, yeah. perfect. That is awesome. All right, we got a couple more questions coming in for you, my darling. Oh, my darling. I don't know why I'm saying that. I apologize. (laughs) Willie says, are there any musicians you can think of where you don't necessarily like the music they play, but respect their talent as a guitar player and maybe are even inspired by them? I don't know. I mean, I like a lot of music, so I... The only thing I, the only genres I'm not really into are like country and like new rap. Like, I I'm not gonna like religiously listen to anything else besides like rock or metal because that's just like what it was brought up on. But like, there's other genres that I like. Uh, so I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. But if I do, I'll let you know for sure. Very cool. All right. Let's see. Kelsey K is asking, is that the Moses app? No, it's the Spark app. Um, so when you get a Spark Mini, they give you a uh, code to get the app, and you just activate your app from the app and ready to go. Very cool. Uh, Taylor, what are you using um, whenever you're recording to – I'm like, my brain's not functioning, everybody. No, Rewind. All right. What are you using uh, to record your videos? Are you using, like, a DAW? Um, Most of my or- videos are just with my cell phone camera. Really? Um. Yeah. A lot of my yeah. A lot of my videos are. Um. I've done a couple where I've gone with a Shure SM57 into my Spark Mini. Okay. But um, most of my videos are just with my phone. So the qual. I mean, the audio, everything. It's just direct from your phone. Yeah. Wow, dude, it sounds so amazing. Thank you. You see, so many people think, you know, you need the bells and the whistles. You need this amp. You need this computer. You need this program. You need this kind of guitar, this kind of X, Y, and Z. No, you don't need all the junk. You don't need all the hoopla. You just need a lot of time, dedication, and and practice, right? Oh, yeah. But I'd say, like, if I'm recording an album, I'll definitely use, like, a DAW or, like, but I want to use, like, a mic into, like, a tube amp. I have a tube amp at home. I have a Mesa it's broken because i bought it used but i gotta get that fixed but i can't wait to start using that over the summer yeah very cool all right let's see willie willie he says i challenge you to listen to the trucks band if you haven't sort of country-ish and Derek trucks is a goat okay i'll give it a listen for sure very cool thank you so much willie uh, let's see. Guitar players can do that. Hard for bass to come through at times. What are we talking about, Kelsey? I'm very confused. I'm confused all the time. 
Um, all right, all right, you guys. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? So eventually, you're going to be putting a band together. Eventually, Taylor, you're going to be out on the road, kicking ass, going to the UK, taking names later. I mean, what kind of legacy are you trying to leave with your music? I want to be remembered for just being having my own distinct sound, uh, inspiring others, being able to have make a living off of my music and uh, help people with my music. Uh, I want to help get my like I want to get my true thoughts like out on my guitar and I want that to be expressed through my playing. Um, and I want to show other people that they can do that too. Very cool. I think you're showing so many people and thank you so much for being such an inspiration at such a young age. Donovan. Oh, you. My phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's why they make headphones, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plug in the earphones, everybody. That is yep. uh, quite the difficult task. Um, all right, guys, we're going to start getting out of here. If you have any last minute questions, make sure to drop them there. I appreciate all of you guys for coming and hanging out with me and Taylor. You guys could be anywhere in the world right now. You're here with us. It means absolutely everything to have your support. If you're not already following Taylor on Instagram, make sure to do it today. This beautiful woman is putting out content that will blow your mind. She does it for free from the love of her heart. The least you can do is go like and subscribe and share it's a free way you can support this girl right here taylor do you have any merch that we can buy not yet uh i kind of want to start doing some of that maybe at some point but i don't have any like catch line or catchphrase yet that would be appropriate to like put on a shirt or something yeah a hundred packets I'll, of I'll ranch. a hundred packets of ranch taylor no, no, no. That's not what you think it means. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know what it means. I just think it's funny that uh, I couldn't even, like, imagine what that would mean. Like, for pizza, like a pizza party. It's nothing yeah. bad, but. I don't think it's bad. Never, no. <laughs> you'll never guess. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we got to come up with a catchphrase for Taylor for her merch. Maybe she will actually come up with it on her own. But whenever it does come out, we want to definitely buy some of this merch from you. So please let us know. That'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Let's see. Kelsey Ranch and Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like uh, pineapple on your pizza? Yeah. I mean, it's not my first choice, but it's good. All right. Very cool, man. Hell yeah. All right. Let's see what else. What else we got? Day sometimes sounds all right on the iPad, but it's a night and day difference with the doll. Yes. Oh, absolutely. 1,000%. All right. All right. I guess last question of the evening. If you um, could go ahead and give everybody watching live at home and listening on the podcast the best piece of advice, either music-wise, life-wise, whatever you got for us. I'd say the best piece of advice that I've heard, at least, is uh, don't try to be others. Be yourself, because you're never going to be able to replicate somebody else 100%. And if you do, everyone's just going to be like, oh, there's the cover artist. Well, try to be yourself, because... If you're yourself, maybe people will start to try to replicate you. And you being yourself will get true, your true heart and your true m passions out on your instrument or whatever it may be. So just remember to always be yourself. Beautifully put. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom, Taylor. Uh, all right, we're gonna start getting out of here tomorrow. I have Mike Torin and Friends of Bass Players United. I hope you guys can come back and check that out and check in the rest of the week. 29th, I got Brittany Latimer. On the 30th, I got Kaya Hall. So we got a full week of action-packed guests. Like I said, make sure to go follow Taylor on all the uh all the platforms. Uh, Taylor, do you have a YouTube channel yet? Oh, you said you keep getting strikes. Yeah, I, copyright strikes me for some reason. So I'll put it on my Instagram when I get one out. Perfect. All right. Well, we're all here for it. Make sure anytime you want to come back on the show, hit me up. I'd love to have you back on as a guest. All right, awesome. guys, until next Was there anything else you'd like to talk about before well, we thank, got here? Thank you for having me.
I really appreciate oh, it. You are so welcome. Thank you for accepting the invitation. No All worries. right, guys. Thank you. All right, until next time, make sure you guys are kind to everybody around you. You never know the battles that people are facing. Try to keep a smile on your face and be safe out there, guys. It's a dangerous fucking world. I'll say it one more time. Stay safe out there. It's a dangerous world. All right, Taylor, on three, we're going to say bye. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Uno, dos, tres.